Hey, Crosspoint Online, it is great to see you. Uh, thank you for joining us as we are finishing up and wrapping up our series of the Bible and movies and how they can kind of correlate and speak to our lives. Um, Dave is gonna be bringing that message as he's talking about the Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, so you don't wanna miss that. Uh, just know that everything you see here, the uh, production and the things we do uh, live, if you've seen our live uh, videos, um, happen because of you guys. They happen because you guys support us and you give and you make all this come to reality. Without you, none of this would happen. So if you're on the screen and on the description down below, if you see a link, uh, just go ahead and click that. Um, send us some money, help give to the church uh, as we um, you know, reach out to the community. It is through your giving that we can spread the message and help other people around here. So let Dave bring the message. Um, so sit back and I will see you after the message. So the final movie in our summer series is called, uh, that we call The Bible According to the Movies is The Guardians of the Galaxy. The, this, this movie features the Guardians, right, uh, which are a bunch of, of guys who are pulled together to save the universe from a very, very real threat, a threat of total annihilation of the whole entire species, right? The Guardians are mostly a band of misfits who choose to work together for the common cause of saving the galaxy. And they bring together all of these unique gifts and skills and talents and abilities and join together to defeat evil. And it kind of sounds like what the church is supposed to be about, right? We're supposed to pull all of our gifts and our abilities and our skills together to defeat evil. And Jesus calls us his disciples in doing that. And so how do we follow him and join our gifts and our abilities to combat evil in the world? Because we have been called by God as followers of the Savior of all things, Jesus, right? To be guardians, to pull together our abilities that each of us has been given and to unite them with everyone else who's following Jesus in an effort to show the world the salvation offered to us by Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Now, the Guardians of the Galaxy is about a band of misfits who are united together to save the universe. And they all have to get past the fact that no one believes in them and their abilities. And they need to figure out how to get along with each other because they're misfits, right? And Rocket, the, the raccoon, he's this snarky raccoon guy who says to his fellow heroes what a lot of people are often thinking. Why would you save the galaxy What's the galaxy ever done for you? Sounds a lot like the church 2,000 years ago asking Jesus, why would you save us? What have we ever done for you? And it sounds a lot like the church today that we see in the world today, that we're living in a world where guardians of truth and salvation need to rise up and fight the evil that's pervasive today. And the answer is to that question, why save the galaxy? is because we're worth it. Now that might sound a bit heavy as a way to start off this message today, right? But let me say this, we've been called to accomplish something that is nothing shy of making people aware of, making sure that people know that, that we are all eternal beings and that we will all live forever and that wherever we live, whatever we do, the question we have to answer is this, where are we going to live our eternity at? And the answer is based on who we choose to believe in. So let me read a passage in the Bible for us and then I want to talk for just a few minutes about that passage. So I want to urge all of us to hear this passage together. First of all, to pray for everybody and to ask God to help us, right? That's what we're going to do. We're going to ask God to do those things. And so here's what it says. I urge you, it's in, it's, by the way, it's in 2 Timothy chapter 4 and it's verses 1 through 4. 1 Timothy, sorry, 1 Timothy 4, 2, 1 Timothy 2, 1 through 4. So here's what it says. I urge you, first of all, to pray for all people. Ask God to help them intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them. Pray this way for kings and all who are in authority so that we can live peaceful and quiet lives marked 
by godliness and dignity. This is good and pleases God, our Savior, who wants everyone to be saved and to understand the truth. All right, so that's 1 Timothy 2, 1 through 4. The galaxy is in trouble, and Jesus is talking to all of us and says, there's, there's a way to be a guardian in this galaxy of trouble. I mean, since the very beginning of all things, the galaxy has been in trouble. And it's because we're not perfect. None of us are perfect. We're susceptible to failure, decomposition, mistakes and malfunctions. We do all of those things. And, and the Bible didn't have to remind us, any of us, that we're not perfect, right? I visited with a 90-year-old member not long ago, and she's like, I'm 90. Look at what happened to me. Gosh, I fell apart, right? I mean, it's true for all of us. And we need, we need to know that God loves us and that God is holding us all together and that we need God's wisdom and God's power and, and, and that there's a God who created everything, ladybugs to gravity, right? Everything. And we all have a need for something greater, something bigger. We all have a need for God. So when this passage says that we're supposed to pray for each other, it says so with this basic understanding in mind, that we are to pray for people who need God just like we hope people are praying for us, people who also need God. I mean, we all need God, right? We all need God to hear our names lifted up before the one who loves all of us. Not because God forgets about us, but because God loves to hear our names. He created us and he wants to hear our names. He makes him smile. And when I hear the sound of one of the names of my kids or one of my grandkids' names, it smile. I smile. It makes me, it makes me excited. My whole face lights up, right? So, you see, when God calls out someone's name, like ours, when, when God hears that name being called out before him, the one who created us, he gets happy. I, I think God wants to hear us praying for one another, lifting each other up and reminding God that not only does he love us, but we're supposed to be loving one another. I mean, the very one who gave us breath and life smiles when he hear our, hears our names. Let me make that a little bit more personal. God smiles when he hears your name. And I need that. I need others to be saying my name to God so that he can smile over me. I need others to say my name before the throne of God because I have the very same needs everyone else has. I need God. I need everything that he can do in my life. And when I forget that, I just hope and pray that others are lifting my name before the Father because like all the rest of us, I need God and I want him to hear my name and to smile on me and on the things I'm trying to do that brings honor and glory to who he is. And I fail at that. I tend to fail at that. So there will always be a need for prayer, right? Because we're not perfect. There's always going to be a need for prayer. It's why it's so important to pray for people because we all have that same need. Whether you're President of the United States or whether you're um, you know, an average Joe or Jane, to have God fill that hole inside of us that we all have means we all need prayed for because we all make mistakes. We're all in the same boat. It's a really big boat, but we're all in the same boat, right? But that's not the only need I have. There's a need that's even greater than my momentary temporal need right, that I have right now, and that's my need for an eternity. This passage points out for all of us that there is something bigger, something greater, something more. You see, there, there are those things that, that I do that, that have the ability to separate me from God. Now, I don't like them, but they're there, and they distance me from who God is. And the more I do these things, the more they separate me from God and the further away I can become. And, and, and that's how I started out. I mean, I started out separated from God, loved by him, but separated from him because I'm human and I'm not perfect. And perfect and imperfect can't be in the same place at the same time. And so I need a savior. I need God to love me so much that he would save me. I mean, we're born imperfect and God loves us and so he chose to save us. 
because I need saved. I, I am not perfect. Yeah, I know, it's not the first time I said that, and it's certainly not the first time you realized it. None of us are perfect, right? And so Jesus stepped in. God called his son to, to do something for me that I can't do for myself. He called the perfect one to step into my imperfection and make me perfect. Now, I know what you're saying. Uh, I'm not perfect and I'm not made perfect. I I'm going to be perfect. But what he does is this. He takes my imperfections and wipes them away with his perfection, making me perfect enough, good enough to be in heaven with God forever. That's what Jesus did. And while I'm working at getting better in my life, this part of my life is never going to go away because I will never be perfect enough to be in the presence of pure perfection, which is what God is. So I'll always need a savior. I can't ascend high enough. I can't reach a level of consciousness that is great enough for me to be able to exist in the presence of God for all eternity. That's what Jesus did for me. He saved me. Saved me from myself. And there will always be a need for a Savior because we all need Jesus. And that need's never going to go away. Primarily because what is imperfect cannot create perfection. I can't make myself perfect. I'm imperfect. And so imperfect can't say all of a sudden, well, today I'm just going to be perfect. We've all tried that, right? It's like, it's, it's like growing watermelons on an apple tree. It doesn't happen. It's not going to happen. It's never going to take place. And I'm never going to be perfect because I'm imperfect. I need a Savior. And if we're going to please God, as this passage says we can, then we need to accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And so one of the things we can all do is we can all pray. We can pray for ourselves, we can pray for each other. Since we're all in the same boat, then we need to be praying for each other. And I believe those prayers get heard by a God who loves us. A God who wants everyone to be praying for everyone and for everyone to be saved. Now, that sounds big. It sounds big for me to pray for everyone and that everyone needs to be saved. Everybody, God wants everyone to be saved. But no one gets left out on this. No one's going through life alone. No one's going through this world without another person lifting them up is what Jesus wants for all of us. If we're praying for each other, then we also recognize we're never alone. We're not on this journey by ourselves. And we can all make God smile today by lifting up another person's name in prayer and by recognizing our position, the one that puts us in a need for prayer and a need for salvation and to say, God, I'm depending on you today. Our need for God is also the need everyone else has every day. The person who cut us off in traffic needs God. Just as much as the person taking their last breath in a care facility after living a good long life. We all need God just as much as the addict or the codependent. We all need prayer and salvation just as much as the ruler of a corrupt nation or the scammer who would take everything. We all need God. We all need prayer. We all need his salvation. So we need to start each day and end each day and live each day all through the day with prayer and with a recognition of our need for salvation. The world would be a better place if we would adopt an attitude of daily prayer and humble recognition of our need for salvation. It's hard to hate or despise someone or to be jealous or to, to gossip about somebody that we're praying for or to have ill feelings towards somebody knowing full well that they're just in the same place we are in the need for a savior. And who knows, maybe as God hears our prayers, something big could happen. I've seen the power of prayer and I've watched God do some pretty miraculous things in my life. When his people prayed, amazing things took place and I've seen them happen. Praying each for each other opens doors and salvation 
opens eternity. And we need those things. So let's pray down the things that are holding us back and let's pray up the things that bring a smile to the one who is holding out eternity for all of us. The last verse that I read, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4, says this, that God wants everyone to be saved. In 2 Peter 3, 9, it says this, we're told that the, the final days are not here yet because God is patient toward us, not wishing anyone to perish, but giving time for everyone to find God and to repent and be saved. God wants all of us. God wants every single one of us in the kingdom. God wants to save the galaxy. And that means you and me. The very God who created us wants us to spend eternity with him. God's given us a choice to make. To believe, to repent and be saved, or to reject, deny, and be lost. So let's go for eternity today as we live and pray not just for ourselves, but for everyone we meet, everyone we know, everyone we love. How about everyone? Amen? Let's do that. Let's step into a place of prayer and recognition for the need of salvation. If you need to know Jesus today, if you want somebody to pray for you, we'd love to be that place. We'd love to be that church. We'd love to be those people who are praying for you and at walking through each one of our needs for salvation. If you would love to know more about what it means to be saved, what it means to be closer to God, we'd love to be that place. Talk to us through the channels that we've created. You can do it through chat, through email, through Facebook Messenger, all those different kinds of places. We'd love to be in connection with you. But for right now, I wanna pray for you. Father God, I thank you for every single person who's been watching. And I ask God that you would take this message of prayer and salvation and bury it deep within us so that we can live it out every single day. And in those times and those places where it's challenging and where it's difficult, Lord, walk us through it so that we can be your champions, your guardians in this galaxy today. That's what we're asking, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for being a part of this uh, this week's message, and I hope that everything you heard today just resonates deep within you and you start seeking after a life of prayer and a life of, of being saved in Jesus' name. Take care and see you soon. Thanks, Dave, for this message. Uh, as we wrap up the series to movies, and we um, next week are going to start the study on James and the book of James and how that correlates to our walk and our faith. You won't want to miss that as we dive into that. Um, also, remember that VBS Bash is coming. Um, we have on the events calendar or social media, you'll see blurbs out for it. Uh, if you want to get in touch with Matt, his name is down here at the bottom. If you want to help um, kind of volunteer for the uh, events and help do some games or hand out gifts or, or just be there as a presence to welcome people, uh, we would love to have you. So keep that in mind, put it on your calendar. And again, we will see you next week for the book of James. See ya.